Ukrainian President Zelensky is making the rounds. He's been speaking to lawmakers across the globe. Right now, he's addressing lawmakers in Japan. Let's take a listen. For the harmonious development of societies, and I am grateful to the leaders of the Asian region for their position. You immediately denounced this aggressive war uh, by the Russian Federation against Ukraine, and this has been very important. It is very important for everyone on the planet, because without peace in Ukraine, no one in the world will be safe. Everyone knows about the nuclear catastrophe of Chernobyl which released radiation in 1996. There is an exclusive zone that still exists around this nuclear plant. And at the time of the explosion, thousands of tons of nuclear waste were buried. And on February 24th, in the same site, Russian soldiers, Russian tanks advanced, and they invaded the Chernobyl center. And the shell that contains the nuclear waste, the sarcophagus, was held by, became to be held by Russian soldiers, and it's used by Russian soldiers to launch their offensive against Ukraine. It will take years before we can accept, uh, assess the extent of the damages caused by Russian soldiers on this site and damages that may be linked to the dissemination of this nuclear debris. Ladies and gentlemen, there are four nuclear plants. That is 15 reactors, and we also have the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe, which has been targeted by the Russians. Shells have fallen on the gas pipelines, the oil pipelines in the area of Sumy. We have observed uh, leaks of ammonium of ammonia which represents a great threat which we might compare to threats that were or attacks that were carried out in Syria Russia has the capability to use nuclear weapons. For 28 days, we have been valiantly defending Ukraine. 28 days of unspeakable warfare. But this is not the worst part of the war in terms of its impact, impact when we looked at it's not only the media, we see the thou a thousand missiles that have been launched, cities that have been burned, cities that are under siege, and the inhabitants of these cities are not even able to bury their dead in a dignified manner. The bodies are thrown into courtyards. Thousands have been killed. 121 children have been killed. Millions of Ukrainians have been forced to leave their homes to escape from the wrath of Russian soldiers. In the east, in the south, the cities have been emptied out because people are escaping. Russia has cut off access to the sea. 
and they have shown the whole world what they are capable of. Ladies and gentlemen, our anti-war coalition can guarantee that the international community will not disappear, will not evaporate, that the world will resist, that we can preserve cultural diversity. I am convinced that our children and our grandchildren will know peace. International organizations have not fulfilled all of their objectives. What can they do to encourage peace? Well, to do something, they must be transformed. They must undergo reforms. We must inject them with truth serum. The world is facing crises now. International markets have been impacted by this war. We've seen the consequence on the food supply, unprecedented consequences. But the most important thing, is that all of the aggressors around the world, those who are committing war today or plan to in the future, will they understand that there are obstacles, that they must not engage in war, the world must come together to defend peace? I am very grateful to your country for the position that you have taken, for having genuinely supported Ukraine. We must put pressure on Russia, and I call on you today to continue to do so. I call on you today to unite all of your partners, to stabilize the situation, to block the tsunami of aggression, of Russian aggression. We must uh, keep Russian companies off the markets. You must help our country, our defenders, our soldiers, who are stopping the Russian soldiers. As of now, we must begin to think about how we will restore Ukraine. Because there are cities that have been ravaged, that are empty of their population. Ukrainians must be able to come back home. They must be able to feel safe again in their homes. And I am convinced that you understand me and that you understand this basic need to come home, to come back to our land. We must work to create security guarantees to block all of the threats to peace. We could create international structures after this war with new powerful guarantees against aggression and the leaders of Japan can play a vital role in this. And I suggest to you for the general reassurance of everyone, we must come together to ensure a stable future, a peaceful future for ourselves and for the generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, together we are strong. And we can create a better future. We know what your strengths are. We know what you are capable of. You know how to preserve life, to preserve the environment. You have a thousand years old culture that is revered by Ukrainians. This is the truth. In the in 2019, my wife launched an initiative 
to translate Japanese tales, folk tales, into Ukrainian. And these folk tales have a lot of wisdom in them. We are meeting here today, despite the kilometers that separate us. These kilometers do not exist because we are together in our hearts. And thanks to our united forces, thanks to stronger pressure on Russia, we will find peace. We will be able to restore Ukraine. We will be able to transform international organizations. The time is now for all of us. Thank you very much. Aligato. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to Japan. And we're listening there to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky speaking to lawmakers in Japan. He